Let's see if we can go over another place, Henry. And go for a quick walk. We're walking. We'll come over here. Connection now. Okay, perfect. Alrighty. Are we ready, Henry? It's exciting. Come here. We have snacks. We'll have breakfast with Henry. Alrighty. Morning from the Center for Wildlife and from Henry, who is our North American Porcupine Ambassador. Welcome to our morning meeting with wildlife. Thank you for welcoming us into your home um, and having a chance to have some fun and some learning this morning with Henry, who's pretty fantastic. I'm actually going to see he's enjoying his breakfast. And because he's enjoying his breakfast, he's not going to go anywhere. Oh, crunch, crunch, crunch. So Henry is, um, like I said, a North American porcupine. He is a non-releasable wildlife ambassador that lives with us at the Center for Wildlife. He came to us in 2014. Um, someone had tried to rehabilitate him. Uh, he had had a wound on his tail. I know, it's true. I'm telling your story. Uh, um, so no wild... We did try for about six months to wild Henry out. Um, that involved not talking to him. Um, you know, no niceties, no hi Henry, he didn't have a name back then, um, but he just would open the door for us every time we came in to bring him food. So the decision was made um, to keep him here as a wildlife ambassador and that was made because he's not afraid of any predators and so because of that he would um, not last very long out in the wild. He just has no fear. Uh, we're really lucky to have him. He's only about, uh, he'll be turning six this year. Uh, but the oldest one I know of lives down at the Museum of Science in Bottled. So that is the expectation that we have given Mr. Henry. What are you enjoying right now? Oh, sweet porcupines are really misunderstood. We actually see them quite a bit around um, our area. Anytime you see some hemlock or beech or things like that, black birch, these guys are really natural foresters and they're really amazing because they go into an area of the woods. Um, it's misunderstood. Many people think that they kill all the trees. They don't. They actually just thin out the trees. Um, and so that happens when they go in and they'll eat the cambium, which is the layer of underneath the bark on a tree. Uh, they are vegan, so they do not eat any sort of meat or dairy product, they, unless it's the baby. Um, and they definitely um, get a bum rap, unfortunately, but they actually make our forests healthier. So if we have something that comes through, some sort of blight or something that affects a certain type of tree, because these guys have gone through and thinned out the forests, it helps to um, contain that disease in the trees and it also helps to make sure that we have plenty of sunlight and just natural processing going on in the woods, huh, Henry? I don't know if you guys can see, one of my favorite things that all porcupines do, including the wild patients, are these feet. This is how they sit. They sit on their platters, they sit on their water dishes, and we usually give our patients some sort of rock or something, and they'll also sit on that and sort of perch on it. You can see these beautiful, beautiful toenails. Oh, can I not show? I just wanted to show. So see how long these are. Many people don't realize that um, a lot of time up in the trees, um, eating those shoots and fruits and things like that up there, um, they'll actually eat a lot in the tree and then take a nap up in the tree. Um, so oftentimes what happens is uh, the mom will climb up the tree to eat. Oh my goodness, we're making a mess. And the, she'll leave the baby at the Henry. Um, people find them, they're very, very small. They're about the size of a softball when they're first born. Um, they're called porcupets, which is amazing. Um, and they, people mistake them for being orphaned. Um, oftentimes they're not. And if people just take the time to stop and listen and look and wait for a few minutes, um, they might realize that mom is, you know, hurriedly climbing down the tree to get back to her baby, um, or is just in another tree nearby. So right now he's enjoying some acorn. He's getting the outside shell off and then eating that delicious meat inside. He's a great um, decider of good acorn versus bad acorn. If this were not a good acorn, he would have already taken it and thrown it aside. Huh, Henny Penny. 
guys are the second largest um, rodent in North America, the largest being a beaver. And if you look at the shape of their body and that sort of thing, you can see um, they're actually pretty similar in shape as far as where their ears and <laughs> What is that? Are you eating lab chow? His lab chow is very tasty. Are your teeth? Those teeth in there, you'll see that his teeth are actually almost this color orange. It's not because he needs to brush his teeth. He actually has iron in his dentin. Um, or in his teeth. And so he's able to, those teeth are really, really strong and able to chew down those trees. And then as he's growing, he's chewing those, or rubbing those teeth together and chewing on different things, and that helps to wear them down. So it's incredibly important um, for our rodents, that includes squirrels, chipmunks, um, porcupine, and things like that, that they have these hard things to chew on um, to help their teeth stay healthy, healthy and happy, because if they're good. Oh, Mr. Man. Mm -hmm. Levi says, I love you. Oh, Henry says, and, I love you, yeah. Levi. And Candace wants to know what their favorite trees to nibble on are. Ooh, so what's fun, that's a great question, Candace. What's fun is that he has to, Henry tells us what his favorites to nibble on are. So for instance, for humans, if you were to say, you know, Hershey's chocolate bars are your favorite and you ate them all the time, eventually it would get kind of old and you would be like, mm, I wanna try something different. So seasonally, his favorite tree changes. So in the winter time, these guys love hemlock. Um, so this right here is some beautiful uh, part of a Christmas tree, an organic Christmas tree that someone donated. Henry's been interesting this year in that he didn't really dig the hemlock this year. He's been really going for white pine um, and we take our, our cue from him. So for instance, right now, many people are tapping their trees, uh, sap is running, and you have you know, many times the porcupines and things will love the sugar maples. But as soon as that sap turns, as soon as it's no longer sweet and people take down their tapping equipment, um, these guys, trees, um, which is really interesting, and beech trees, birch. If you find black birch out in your yard, um, you can sort of scratch the bark a little bit on it and smell it, and it almost smells licorice-y. Um, it, it's, it's an interesting, it must be very tasty. I have never eaten black birch, but he really digs it and likes it a lot. Um, there are things that he cannot eat. Um, we have witch hazel, um, which is not good for them, but these guys, he's very good at knowing what he wants to eat and what he doesn't. Um, if you ever have a outhouse or a shed or something built in your backyard with plywood or things like that, do you hear Dr. John leaving? You see how he paused. He was like, oop, someone's moving. Um, they actually really enjoy the, the glue that they, that is, that puts like remote camps or things like that. They may come back in the spring and whoop, someone's mm -hmm. chewed their whole outhouse or whatever else down. Um, the other thing that they will chew on um, because they need salt when they wake up, uh, or not when they wake up, when they are coming out um, in the springtime, um, they really need their metabolism changes and so they need salt. And so if you have an ax handle, a hammer handle, anything that's wood, even a door handle that people have been touching and the salt from their skin has gotten on, these guys will also um, be chewing on that. And Zoe wants to know, how do you not get poked by his quills? That is a great question, Zoe. I Where did all his quills go? And we smile and go that, Henry, he's a clever boy. So if I move his quills like this, you can see he has over 30,000 quills on his body. I'm actually gonna borrow, well, I'm gonna take this one. So see how he sort of was like, hmm, I don't like that. But it didn't hurt him necessarily. So he has over 30,000 quills like this on his body. The interesting part of these quills is that they're just like our hair. It's a modified hair. So when we sneeze, our hair doesn't shoot off of our head. When he, you know, shakes, occasionally a quill may fall off, but he does not shoot his quills. The point of the quill right here has microscopic barbs on it. So what happens is, you know, if you look around or talk to people who have had experiences with porcupines, you get quilled because we look at that and go, well, that's sharp and I don't want to touch that. Dogs, on the other hand, porcupines have a very strong scent. If I had smell-o-vision, I would give it to you guys right now. Um, they have strong scents. So dogs will push their noses like this. The porcupine will turn his back and go, no, don't leave me alone. I don't want to bring it to be like, no, get out of here. Don't do that. Go into the dog's nose or mouth or whatever. Um, sometimes coyotes also will do it. That's Bertram. Um, and then it gets pulled out of his 
body. So remember when I pulled that one quill, he was sort of like, ah, I don't like that, but it didn't really bother him. It's the equivalent of me taking one hair off of my head and it sort of like, ah, whatever. But if I go to take a fistful of hair off of my head, that would really hurt. So when these guys, the dog is usually the one that attacks, that's right, Mavis. Uh, the dog is usually the one that attacks the porcupine. It does hurt them to lose quills. When we work with him, we do wear gloves. Um, just for safety's sake, it's always good to use the proper PPE um, or personal protective equipment. Um, but the other thing is that we sort of take our cue from him. But two, you'll see these beautiful guard hairs right here. They're sort of like the whiskers on a cat. And these hairs right here, most wild porcupines have lots and lots of guard hairs. That's almost like a light brown, even though underneath they're this dark furry brown. This is his winter coat. And he'll, he'll drop them and then we go, oh my gosh, Henry, you're half the man you used to be. And he does, you know, he does come into contact with us. Um, we think that's one of the reasons that the guard hairs ne aren't necessarily as long. <laughs> Addie and Emma want to know how old Henry is. It's a great question. We know that Henry is going to be six this year because when he came into us in 2014, he was a baby. Um, and we know that because of his size. We know that because of his behavior. Um, once they're adults, it's very, very difficult to know how old they are when they come into us. Um, but we are very fortunate to know that Henry is around six. Um, and that for a very, very long time. One day, maybe we'll even do Henry birthday parties, huh, bud? And Maeve is a falcon who lives right along this yep. wall right here. She'll be on a Facebook <laughs> Live, too. But she, right now, she says, excuse me, I'd like my breakfast. Mm, she's the one that keeps talking. She does. <laughs> So um, the interesting thing for porcupines is that they have a very long gestational period. So they have about a seven month gestational period, uh, meaning that the mom is pregnant for seven months, which is pretty long um, for an animal of this you know, size and nature. The porcupines mate, the answer is very carefully um, because both of them do have you know, a full set of quills. The only place that Henry and other porcupines don't have quills is on this cute little muzzle face. I can. Can I take? Oh, you're sitting on it. <laughs> I know. I know. Can I do this though? I know. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh that was a sad noise. Come here, you. I know, but I want to show them your belly. Hold on. Like, no, hey. no. Hi, guys. I want to say hi up close. This is old camera. What's the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> show them your belly. It's okay. He's like, hi. guys, guys, how you doing out there? There's that belly. There it is. So you can see there's no quills on that. Um, yes, Maeve, you don't have quills on your belly either. Um, which is, that's their, their tender spot. That's where they can be hurt and injured. And um, it's actually fisher are their only known predator. It's how fisher attack. They will knock them over and then go after the belly. So nine times out of ten, if you run into these guys out in the wild, they're pretty aloof. They won't really run away. And if they do, they won't run fast. Um, so, but they'll turn their back to you and put their quills up and that's really normal. Um, so back to them being babies, we'll start to see babies pretty soon. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, mentioned earlier, they do come out and they're looking for salt, um, after the winter time. And you'll find them a lot on the side of the roads because we use a lot of salt on our roads here in New England. So these guys will come to the side of the roads. They will go to eat that salt. If a tree or if a car comes, unfortunately, they have really one method of defense and that is their quills. So they'll turn their back to the car and raise their quills. Unfortunately, against a 4,000 pound car, that's not really. Um, and the other thing to be careful of is that you will see moms and you will see the babies following those moms. So even if you're driving and you, you're like, oh, almost, you know, I missed that porcupine. Keep in mind that there may be another porcupine coming up behind and it may be smaller. Um, those baby porcupines are called porcupets because that's fun and adorable and amazing. Um, and that likes to come and see him. Um, she thinks he's pretty fantastic. Henry, I think, is more prone to liking humans, so he sort of looks at her and says, do you have sweet potato? No? Okay, gotta go. Right, mister? Parker and Clara would like to know where they live in the wild, and do they build a nest or a den? That is an excellent question, Parker and Claire. So, the cool thing about these guys is that they live pretty much everywhere in the big, like, 
glacial, you know, where rocks have been left and things like that. I know, Maeve. And there's some good hemlock or beech. Um, you will find them there. You'll also find them on the edge of fields. Like for, new, for instance, in New England, we have a lot of fields from the old farmlands and things. These guys actually will come out and they enjoy things like clover and grasses and things like that. Um, so you'll find them there as well. As for dens or nests, they do not make a nest per se, but they will go into um, hollowed out um, outcroppings, rocky outcroppings, caves, if you will, if there's a base of a tree um, that's hollowed out. These guys may end up in there and see how big they are. All they have to be able to do is pretty much fit their head into it and they will squeeze themselves into that den and then they'll squeeze themselves back out and you can tell that they've been in that den because they're actually, one, very stinky. No offense, Henry, it's a beautiful smell. Wow. Um, the babies, when they have their babies, the baby girls or the baby females will stay with the mom for about six months. And the baby boys or the baby males will stay with their mom for about a year. Um, they usually only have one. And they're amazingly cute. I mean, imagine Henry in miniature form. Pet. So cute, Henny. You'll notice these and throw them to the side and eat everything else, and then he'll eat the rest of his greens after. So Sophia would like to know if his nails are sharp. Ooh, great question. So his nails aren't sharp like talons, like our our raptor friends. Can I turn and just show this foot so she can see? Thank you. But they are long. We don't trim them or clip them or anything. Um, he does have access to being able to climb around uh, in his enclosure. They're not sharp per se, like a talon would poke through your skin, um, but they're they're like a dog. If he were to be grabbing onto my hand, he could scratch me or something like that, which is another reason why we wear the gloves. Uh, but again, those are mainly for them being able to climb up in their trees. They don't climb like squirrels. Squirrels are up, down, all around, skippity doo dah. you know. Oh, look at him. <laughs> nice, Hen. Nice, Henry. What is that? Eat your greens. Eat your greens. I don't want to. No, you silly boy. Are you going to forage instead? Hmm. I, I mean, mean, we should. Yeah. And Molly wants to know how long they live. Oh, Miss Molly. Excellent. Great question. In the wild, they have a, a shorter lifespan just because they have more pred predators. Oh, oh, big sneezes. My goodness. Um, and they also, unfortunately, do get hit by cars and suffer from things like sarcoptic mange and things like that. Um, but in captivity, um, the oldest one I know of has lived to be over 30 years old. Um, and he's down at the Museum of Science. And we're hoping we've given Henry that expectation of, okay, this... Oh, you gonna eat that? It's delish. You want a little white pine? Yeah, Kristen brought that. Girl wants to know if they do they grow them back great question oh these are such great questions uh, so occasionally yeah just like when we brush our hair or comb you in you want to take a little walk we can do that we can walk and talk um they do occasionally um have them fall out just like our hair um but they do are we walking okay where are we going i know that's it for your snacky dudes but sorry you want another apple He's like, mm, I don't know. Um, so they grow back just like our hair grows back. You have mange or sarcoptic mange, which is a mite um, that burrows under their skin. Occasionally when we treat them, all of this fur and all of this hair will fall off. Um, and then he, it'll grow back just like ours do, which is very, very cool. And Chuck wants to know if they're born with their quills. Oh, great question, Chuck. They are. Amazingly enough, they are. We're walking. Okay, here we go. Um, so they're born with their quills. What's interesting is that they're not hard when they're born with their quills. Um, so, or the quills aren't hard. They harden up within about 15 to 45 minutes, depending upon, you know, the scenario, the weather and all that sort of thing. Right? Do you want to come nibble? Look at this. Oh, this is the raspberry right here. You like raspberry. You want that? That's yummy. Yeah, buddy. There you go. So one of the things that we love to do when we take him for walks is to observe what he's eating um, because it tells us what they naturally need. Raspberry. Sometimes he'll go for wintergreen. Usually not. He has a few favorite trees around here. And what's funny is that a lot of those trees are also chewed on by our wild porcupines. So we know that it's definitely part of what they want to eat. 
He says, oh, that was delicious, guys. Do you like raspberries? Do you? For his favorite treats, believe it or not, he loves bananas. And he loves, do you want some of that? Okay, I'll give you some. We'll just give you one. Bag of treats. Look it. There you go. So this is exciting for him because if you think of it, just a little bit ago, we had they do come out in the winter. They're definitely out in the snow. This is, I gotta go. We'll just go with you, Hen. We're good. Um, but all of this is really excited because he's able to forage. He's able to mark. He's able to along and go, hmm, Henry's been here. And Henry says, that's right. Are you too busy marking to eat? Fact. Ish. Kind of, sort of. Not gracefully. He's not going to be winning any Olympic medals doing it. But they have been known and observed in the um, water plants, aquatic plants and things like that. Henry, that was not a graceful <laughs> marking. He says, it's okay, I don't mind. Yep, more marking. Mm. Good job, bud. Oh, why, yes, I would. There you go. Interesting. They, Henry has gone into the stream that we were just next to a couple times, and we have a little one day. Uh, he was not a fan like that they don't have webbed feet or anything um, but even animals like our barred owls have been noticed or noted to um, go to the edge uh, so it's kind of amazing to see all the different ways that these guys can survive and eat in the wild and everything like that they're absolutely magnificent right Henry you're so good Kendall would like to know what his favorite food is oh my goodness oh, what do you think Kristen Sweet potatoes. Sweet potato. Banana. Believe it or not, he eats the whole. Our volunteers will actually bring an extra banana and share it with Henry whenever he comes up for his shift, which is very sweet. Um, not veggies. Not, yeah, no. <laughs> Eventually eats it very reluctantly. He says, I'll but do it. Pumpkins. Um, but yeah, he loves pumpkins, loves squash, sweet potato, apples. Um, all, yes, Bertram, you too. But again, he is a vegan, um, so he does not go and eat any meat products or anything like that. Um, it's funny because when we tell kiddos when we're out, you know, he's eating his sweet potato or whatever else, and we tell them that, you know, that's like his candy. And the kids always think that's pretty funny, that vegetables are candy. Right, Mr. Henry? Another way that you can learn about Henry is you can go onto our website, and that's at www.thecenterforwildlife.org. And you can go to our animal learn a little bit more about him see some other pictures of him and also um, he's available through our adopt an ambassador program which is really really fun so for $25 folks can adopt him or sponsor him for a year and you get a card with a picture of him okay <laughs> I just gotta fix that um, and it's a great way to one support the center support his care um, as well as just have a really neat little moment uh, memento of Henry. Um, it's also a great, uh, once all this quarantine business is over, um, it's a great experiential gift because you can, you know, adopt him, give him some time. Yes, Bertram. It's fantastic. Uh, Missy asks what Henry's favorite thing to do, and Molly wants to know how much he weigh, they usually weigh. Ah, so his favorite thing to do, hmm, that's going to depend upon the time of day and his mood. So I think when, okay, I'll go get you more snacks. Hold on. Oh, goodness gracious. His favorite thing to do is eat. How's that? <laughs> True. So he loves to eat, but he also loves to take walks. He loves to explore. Um, he's a funny, he's a ham. He loves spending time with people, um, which is one of the reasons that we knew that he would be a great ambassador, is that he really does enjoy spending time with us as opposed to tolerating us. He also loves to sleep. Um, so he definitely spends a lot of time sleeping. If he's not eating or walking, he's sleeping, um, which sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Oh, Henry, looking good in that sunlight. So handsome. And Molly asked how much he weighs. Mm -hmm. So he weighs around 10 to 15 pounds, depending. He's a little chunkier, what, twice a week, three times a week? Mm -hmm. And we monitor his weight because um, if he gets too heavy, that's not healthy for him. And we want him to live a long and healthy life. So depending upon his weight, we adjust his platter. Um, you see that he left all of his greens back there. If he's on the chunkier side, he will just get lab chow and greens, and then he gets a little grumpy with us. Oh, listen <laughs> to that smacky smack. You so good. So happy. Yeah. 
Brendan wants to know what his predators are. Oh, great question. So the main, the one natural predator that they have that is effective at predating them is a fisher. Um, it is not a fisher cat, it is a fisher. It's a type of weasel, um, the largest weasel we have. And they hunt them arborally, which is actually pretty impressive. Um, I'm madly in love with Henry, so oftentimes people will assume that I can't stand fisher. I actually find fisher to be fascinating. I find them to be very misunderstood um, and vilified, which is unfortunate because if you're a wild animal and you figured out how to hunt an animal, I'm saying that's impressive. Um, so the fisher will actually climb up usually to the other side of the tree that the porcupine is climbing up. Um, he'll get above the porcupine. He'll wait until the porcupine is a little bit below him and then he'll take his big paw and swat the porcupine in the face, which causes the porcupine to fall backwards. And then the fisher pounces onto the belly. Um, and again, oh, are you doing your dance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get that dance on film and do a little something with that for this fun stuff too. Come on over here and have now a we have How many hours does Henry sleep? And Ooh, that's a good question. Does he eat a variety of foods from Meredith? It is important to eat a variety of food, especially um, for a captive wild animal. Out in the wild, he could choose a variety on his own. So oftentimes we will um, offer him things and he may not eat them, but he might, you know, nibble on them here and there. So he does get a wide variety, which includes acorns, lab chow, apples, sweet potato, squash, pumpkin, um, as well as natural browse. Uh, that's very important for him to have and to eat. Um, and how many hours does he sleep? Good golly. That's a great question. Also, it depends on his mood. It does depend on his mood. <laughs> and how and cold the, it and is. And the time of year. So in the wintertime, he definitely sleeps more. Um, they are pretty much crepuscular. Um, they, they're pretty nocturnal, too. Um, you'll see them out and about. But again, if you see them out and about during the day, it doesn't necessarily mean they're sick. Um, it just means that they're hungry. So especially if you have a nursing mom um, or a young one, uh, you know, they're going to be out there eating food. And they really, you know, they don't look at their clock or watch and go, oh, not time for me to be out yet. I've got to wait until it's dark. Um, you'll see that a lot with our skunks, um, raccoons, fox, and things like that coming up right now because they all have babies. So for those parents who are quarantined with their kiddos, Imagine having five or six of them who are constantly on you wanting to nurse. You're going to need a mommy or a daddy time out. Um, so that's what the, our wildlife is doing um, out in the daytime sometimes. You know, just because uh, there's a great saying, now rabies is a serious thing and you should definitely watch their behavior. But just because you see them out during the day doesn't mean they have rabies. It might mean they have babies. That was the phrase that I heard the other day, which I thought was very appropriate. Candace wants to know if they're immune to poison ivy since we have so much of it in New England. That is a great question. Oh, these questions are fantastic. I love it. So I have never seen, personally, a porcupine with poison ivy. I think part of that is because the oils on the poison ivy plant are what irritate you, right? So you have 30,000 quills over this body as well as this thick, thick fur. So chances of the of the poison ivy getting on them is, is slim to none. They can probably transfer it to you um, if you were to, you know, touch a pork and bring those oils in. Not on purpose, just because they've been walking through it. Um, but they, you know, again, if you guys find these guys in the wild, you want to give them some safe distance, but you're certainly welcome to sit and watch them and observe them. They're really fascinating to watch. And because they have 30,000 quills, they're pretty aloof and they'll they'll tolerate you sitting there and watching them um i used to have a house that had apple orchards but in it or outside of it and we would always have porcupine out there and they're they're rather incredible to watch they'd be up there eating apples like humans they would eat them down to a core and then toss the apple core out it was hysterical and then i don't know if you guys heard his noise can you make the noise we're gonna get it Ooh, that was good. I'm not. Um, when they fight, it is a louder noise, and it's more of a. So if you hear that noise at like two or three in the morning, you just have a little territory war going on with the porcupines in your yard, and they'll figure it out. Um, if you do find one of these guys and they need your help, 
Please be sure not, usually with wild animals, we have people throw a towel over them, scoop them up with gloves, put them into a box and bring them to us. Please don't ever use a towel with these guys. If you throw a towel over him and we go to take the towel off, it will take all of these quills out and it will really, really hurt them. Um, so what we tell folks is, you know, you can kind of shuffle them into a box, no towel, no blanket, no nothing, and then get them to us as soon as possible and then we can help them out with whatever they need. Huh, I have, is he named after? Go for it. I don't know, I wasn't here when he was named. Um, so it is a, he's just always been Henry. He's just, or as we like to say, Henri. Right, Mr. Man? Oh, corn on the cob. Oh, there you go, sorry. He holds it and will actually just chew, chew, chew and go to town. It's pretty fun to watch. Oh, cruncha, cruncha. Cruncha, cruncha. It's fine, we can keep it. And if we have, what do you think, Henry? We could probably close out with just five minutes of him chewing. Let's do that. <laughs> you say bye, Henry. Oh, a little whistle. Say bye, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.